Hello, my name is Terry Phillips and this is my first video podcast on Bluebird's history. We are aiming to issue these on a weekly basis, talking about events over the club's 125 year history. In this first edition, I will take you back well over a century to February 1911 and tell you about a proud Welshman and true Bluebird. This was the month George Latham joined Cardiff City FC at their new Ninian Park ground and he became a highly influential figure in domestic sport. The man from Newtown, Mid Wales, was player coach at Cardiff City for more than 20 years, training their teams who finished first division runners-up on goal difference behind Huddersfield Town in 1924, FA Cup runners-up in 1925 and FA Cup winners in 1927. He also coached the British Olympic team in the 1925 Games in Antwerp, Belgium. On the playing front, Latham earned 10 international caps while he coached and trained City until 1936. He played for Liverpool, Southport Central and Stoke City before coming to South Wales, while he remains at 41 years old, Cardiff City's oldest Football League debutant in the club's history. He had travelled to Blackburn Rovers as part of the manager Fred Stewart's coaching staff during January 1922, before stepping up to play when Jack Evans and Jimmy Gill were take nil and could not play. It was a winning debut for Latham, playing his part in a 3-1 First Division win at Ewood Park, with Billy Grimshaw scoring twice and Len Davis once in front of 30,000 spectators. Latham also played for Cardiff when they won the 1912 Welsh Cup, their first triumph in that competition. Bob Laurie was uh, ruled out of the Cup final replay, after the teams had drawn nil-nil at Ninian Park. City lifted the trophy thanks to a 3-1 win in the replay against Pontypridd at Treforest, with Harry Tracy scoring twice and Harry Featherstone netting the third. More than 18,000 spectators were at Ninian Park for the first game, and 7,000 fans attended when the Southern League Division II rivals clashed again. Latham gener- demonstrated his generosity by presenting clubmate Laurie, who had missed out on the replay, with his winner's medal. There had been another occasion when Latham was called up as an emergency replacement, and this time for Wales at Windsor Park, Belfast. He earned his 10th and final international cap after making the trip to Ireland with the squad in 1913. The two players dropped out through illness and Latham was ready, stepping up to start in a 1-0 Welsh win. Mould Flincher-born James Roberts, who made one First Division appearance for Everton before the First World War broke out, scored the only goal. The name George Latham remains important in his hometown of Newtown Powys, where the local Cymru Premier Club's stadium is named after him, and he is well remembered throughout Wales. His impact in sporting circles was huge, while Latham's military military prowess was immense. He was a teenager, aged 19, when he volunteered to serve in South Africa during the Second Boer War. 1899 to 1902, joining the dandy 5th South Wales Borderers who had a garrison in Newtown. During World War I, Latham served with the 7th Royal Welsh Fusiliers and was awarded the Military Cross for his gallantry on the Turkish front in 1917 and the Bar in 1919 for further bravery. Tales of his actions in Gaza the same place currently in the news over the Palestine-Israeli crisis, became the talk of Newtown and throughout Wales. He fought in Gaza, Palestine and Turkey and finished his military career with the rank of captain. A 1935 edition of the Montgomeryshire Express newspaper said, Lieutenant 
Latham's platoon of the Royal Welsh Fusiliers charged through the prickly pear hedge and captured a machine gun, co collected 20 Austrian and German prisoners, some of whom were officers, and 11 Turks, including a general. He is stated to have cleared the cactus gardens, rounded up prisoners under heavy fire from snipers, and built up a line of defence around the prickly pears, commanding a good view of the Gaza town from a perfect position for a counter-attack. Latham added a bar while fighting in Beersheba uh, in Israel and was mentioned in dispatches by the General Archibald Murray, commander of the Egyptian Expeditionary Force at the time. He later travelled with his regiment to fight in Palestine. Latham still managed to maintain sporting success during his time in the military, helping the Royal Welsh Fusiliers win the British Forces Cup in Egypt and it, in and winning the British Forces Cup in Egypt in 1919. He was also described in the Montgomeryshire Express newspaper as one of the best known characters in the soccer world. Certainly, it said, there is no more lovable man or more illustrious personality. The excellent character of Gentleman George was underlined when it was revealed that he always sent his mother, a matron at Newtown Hospital, a telegram after Cardiff City matches and Welsh games, informing her of the results. Rest in peace, Bluebird George. <laughs>